Have you ever been locked out of your house, your apartment, your car, maybe? I know I have, and I'm not really proud of it, but have you ever been locked out of a computer room on a derelict ship heading straight for, I don't know, sudden death or capture from the space police? No. Well, it just so happens that with this game, Locked Out, designed by Rene Uttenbegad and published by Bearded Board Games, who kindly sent me this review copy, which I will admit I'm very late to reviewing, uh, but I'm finally now getting to it after getting through some live stuff and just not finding the time. So I do apologize, but this review is now here for this game, Locked Out. Locked Out's a very fun and interesting game. It's a semi-cooperative social deduction game. The way that works is that there's two ways to win, and both of them require backstabbing, but also cooperation, which is very interesting and a lot of fun. And I'm going to explain how in just a little bit, uh, but for now, if you're interested on how to play the game, just be aware, I will not be doing a how to play section in this review, but to save time as this is purely a review, and there's a really good video made by the designer themselves on how to play the game that I will link down in the description below. Additionally, if at any point you find this game interesting enough that you want to pick it up, I will have a link to the Kickstarter, which it is currently on, which is 100% funded, so if you back it, you will for sure get the game. And later on, after the Kickstarter is over, I will make sure that there's a link down in the description for where else you can buy it from. So in this review, I will be going over what you get in the box, how to set up the game, a quick summary of gameplay, and my thoughts and personal opinions. And that's it. I'm going to try to keep this as short and sweet as possible for a quick game review instead of bogging it down with a bunch of stuff that people have already covered before. So with that being said, let's just jump straight into it. In the box, you will get 18 resource cards, 16 access cards, 22 loot cards, one maintenance card, one card stand, six pawns, three resource tokens, and eight playing board tiles. The setup for this game is quite simple. First, take all of your playing board tiles and lay them out one to eight, like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Also note that they all connect to each other, like so. Additionally, the engine compartment is part of the ship, but will never be accessed by player's meeples. Next, you need to set up each loot deck for each section. It is helpful to note that on each section, it shows what it needs. For the airlock, crew cabins, recreation room, and galley, they all require two identical orange cards, two random loot cards, and two random resource cards. For the main corridor, the command center, the laboratory, and the server room, they all require two identical purple cards, two random green cards, and two random resource cards. Let's set up these decks now. We'll start off with the airlock, taking the two ethereal lockpicks, two random loot cards, two random resource cards, and shuffling them together. Please note that since I'm showing you how to set up, the cards are all face up. But while setting up, make sure that the loot cards and the resource cards are face down and shuffled when you draw from them. Once the airlock's separate loot deck is shuffled, I'll place it face down next to it. I will now do this for the remaining areas. After you finish setting up the rest of the decks, you'll be left with two random resource cards. Remember, these will be face down and you won't know what they are. Take these cards and shuffle them into the main corridor deck. Next, you need to take your three resource markers and place them on their respective spots on the engine compartment. Keep in mind that depending on the number of players you have starting the game, this will change what setting they are on. In this case, for a 3 to 4 player game, it will all be set to 8. Finally, have each player place their meeple into the main corridor section, and this can be along anywhere it is labeled. Keep in mind that the main corridor is adjacent to all these, meaning if you're over here at this end of the main corridor, you can still access the airlock next turn. Finally, take the maintenance card and give it to the first person. You're now set up and ready to play the game. Just a reminder that the how to play video will be linked in the description below, made by the designer of the game themselves. Please check that out if you'd like to learn how to play the game. It's a very fun game, 
and it adds a lot of unique aspects because not only do you have to work together to accomplish your goal to win the game, but you also have to work against one another because you can only have one winner. It's whoever has the highest amount of loot value at the end if you escape. If you fail, however, whoever has the lowest amount of loot at the end actually wins. So it adds this nice dynamic of should I sabotage, should I not sabotage? Do I want to get a bunch of loot and then be a target or should I hold on to maybe a little bit that I can quickly get rid of if things get dicey? But you gotta work together though to kind of build up enough loot or maybe no loot at all. But you also have to work through and try to go and find these access cards to help you get into the different sections of the ship. It's just a lot of fun. You have to work together while not working together, figure out who's trying to sabotage, who's not trying to sabotage. Maybe no one's trying to sabotage, but you all think each other are sabotaging. It's a lot of fun. We even had one time where a player just acted like they were sabotaging when they weren't. It was a blast. It caused a bunch of chaos. And it was a lot of fun interactions with one another. The gameplay is super simple to learn as well. On your turn, all you do is you take your meeple, put it into an adjacent space. If there's a card there, you draw it. If there's other people sharing the space with you, you show them in order. And whoever wants to trade with you first can trade with you. And if not, if it, if it gets back to you, you get to keep it. After that, you can play as many cards as you want if they're resource and access cards. And the fun really begins when you play an access card because whenever you play an access card, the accusation phase begins. And that's a really fun phase and it's not optional either. It's mandatory to where you have to accuse another player of holding on to other access cards, stopping you from getting into the next area, which makes it a lot of fun. Now, whenever you are accused, you have two options. You can either play the card they're accusing you of having if you can, but if not, if you don't have a card, or if you choose not to and just say that you don't have a card, you can do that, but at the cost of the player who was accusing you looking at half of your cards rounded up and then deciding for themselves. Now, if you have no cards that you know, truly can be played that they can see, they hand it back to you and keep the information secret, or I mean, I guess they could tell people, but they might be lying, you never know. But if they, there is a card in there, another access card that hasn't been played yet and that can be played, they may do so but they don't have to, so they can kind of keep that information to themselves as well and maybe use it as blackmail evidence. You never truly know. That's what makes this game a lot of fun. Overall, it's super simple. The whole goal is to basically backstab while working together, which is perfectly in line with this idea of you playing as a criminal who is working on a ship who that figured out that you're now criminals and locked you out of the computer room so you can't get to the computer room to then change your course to not get caught. So it's kind of a fun dynamic. You gotta work together to play or not play resources if you want to sabotage or not sabotage. It's a lot of the same. I feel like I'm talking over myself and saying the same things. The point is, it's a pretty fun social deduction game with a unique twist of there only being one winner. And there's not really a designated traitor and not traitor, which adds a nice dynamic. However, it also feels somewhat unstructured sometimes. We did have some games where it just felt very meh because there wasn't really a dedicated who is doing what and you're kind of last minute making stuff happen. But at the same time, that opened up for a lot more unique options to happen. What I think would benefit this game a lot is if it had a card that designated someone as the traitor like a police informant card where there's a GPS tracker with a thing or if you found it you can work with the police and get a lighter sentence or whatever and that way if the game fails even if you don't have the least amount of loot you still win if you have this card. The catch is this card is still within the loot decks and it can only be drawn so if this card is never drawn by a player then it's never in play but if it is in play then you still have it to where it can be used to discard uh, to do other actions or to potentially uh, hand off to other players to get them accused or ratted on, which I think would be a lot of fun. Uh, I do know in the Kickstarter, there is a stretch goal to add hazard cards, which are negative bonus points, which, are, which will also kind of help with that sabotage mindset. But overall, as the game is, it is fun, it is playable, and it is very enjoyable. So if you have a group of friends and you guys really like the social deduction game style, then I do think you should check this out. If not, then not every game is for you, but I do hope that this review helped you make up your mind. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that it kind of gave you a clear, mostly unbiased opinion on this game. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next review. And you gotta work together by playing resources, or not playing play, or by not playing blah 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 blah.